We're talking this week about how evolution is still acting on human populations today. But how is it still acting? For example, with the advent of contemporary practices of health and medicine, many individuals reach to be old age. Many individuals survive for a long life, well past peak reproductive years. The kind of selection associated with mortality, particularly juvenile mortality, mortality early in life, mortality that impacts you before reproductive life, is not the kind of mortality that we see in many populations today. And yet, evolution is still happening. Selection is still happening. Now, one of the reasons to understand how evolution is still working today is to recognize that evolution is simply not natural selection. It's natural selection plus mutation, plus genetic drift, plus gene flow. Gene flow is still a varying and dynamic force today, shifting the genetic variation that we see within individual populations. Genetic drift is still happening today as we see populations of different size, different degrees of isolation, different degrees of connectivity. Mutation is obviously still happening today and actually happening to a much greater degree given the overall larger size of populations that we have today. The larger populations we have today, the overall increasing size of the human population, creates a huge amount of more raw material for natural selection to act upon given the increased effect of mutation given larger population sizes. Natural selection is also still operating today, maybe focused less on mortality, maybe focused less on actually individuals not surviving, and more on fertility. Natural selection is a product not just of differential mortality, but also differential fertility. How many children you have, how many grandchildren you have. The fact that there's huge range of variation in fertility patterns today, even if the range of variation in mortality is less than it has been in the past, suggests that evolution is still happening. Now evolution is happening within a much more rapidly changing environment than it probably ever has in the past. Not just the physical environment, not just human climate and climate change, but the cultural environment we occupy. The world that I've occupied in my lifetime, the kind of buildings I've occupied, the kind of food that I've eaten, the kind of interactions I've had with other people in the world around me, are already quite a bit different than my own parents, and which are already quite a bit different than their parents. So the world is changing very rapidly, which limits the ability of natural selection to act for long periods of time. What kind of selection is occurring is changing probably very rapidly from generation to generation, which certainly changes how selection might be acting on populations, but it doesn't eliminate selection. Even if selection is focused only on fertility and not on mortality, it's not eliminating selection. So evolution is still acting today, it's still acting through gene flow, still acting through genetic drift, still acting through mutation, and still acting through selection, even if the ways in which it's acting are changing at a more rapid pace than they ever have in the past. So evolution is as important today as it was 20,000 years ago, or 2 million years ago when the first members of our genus appeared, or 5 million years ago when the first hominins began to appear anywhere in the planet. Evolution still acts, even if it acts differently than it has in the past.